Lucy? Well, I've been following uh, what's happening in Burundi, and uh, I, I feel like I'm a bit afraid for them mm -hmm. because right now everybody is talking about what has gone wrong and how it's going to push everybody over the edge. Uh, but when you look at the outcome of the referendum, mm -hmm. <coughs> it seems legitimate. <coughs> you, the whole thing, oh, excuse me. <coughs> the whole thing was about, uh, you know, uh, bringing legitimacy to the, this whole process, and it has happened. What I've not been able to hear from the opposition is how they are going to um, respond to this. Because what seems very clear is that the government is going full steam ahead. Mm -hmm. And I've not heard what they are thinking about doing besides employing strategies that have failed using our country as an example and many others around Africa. Is Burundi ready to repeat its cycle, the cycle they just stopped in um, 2005? Mm -hmm. They they, 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 they they can't. They just cannot. And I think they need to start thinking about what other ways they are going to employ to, you know, create this impasse. But I, I, I don't know if there are Burundians that are listening. Don't be guided by fear. For me, that's what I'll say. Mm -hmm. Everybody is thinking, for example, that even if he's president till 2034, he will live up to that age. I'm not saying he's going to die, but I'm just saying we can look at those possibilities. Mm -hmm you know, uh, so that we are guided by other motivations besides fear. All right. Uh, Tom Kagwe. You see, <coughs> um, in 2001, when I was teaching and studying uh, African leadership in the 21st century, these are not the characters we thought of. That was in the University of Dar es Salaam. Mm -hmm. uh, but let me look at it within the context of Africa. Mm -hmm. For every Ian Kama, we have nine madmen Within the context of East and Central Africa, yes. Rwanda, through a referendum, removed the term limits of President Kagame. Museveni, just on our western side, the western neighbor, mm -hmm. they did the same. Burundi did the same. And many countries are doing the same. Down in Zimbabwe, we know how many years uh, Robert Mugabe sat there until he was removed. I think the issue of leadership of Africa in the 21st century is a far cry from the vision of what we thought as Africans, both in that turn of the century, where we had seen some glimmer of hope that we'll have mm -hmm. better presidents, like first Festus Mohai, of Botswana, yes. he came to power, left, gave it to, to Ian Kama. Ian Kama is busy watching soccer mm -hmm. in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a stadium which is not even... Uh, so let's put it this way. Let me be very frank about Burundi. What is happening in Burundi is, is, is just ridiculous. For the last three years, 400,000 plus people have been displaced. 1,200 people plus have died. Simply because somebody wants to stay in power for long. I will not be shocked. For example, we just saw what happened in Ethiopia some few months ago, mm -hmm. that uh, the Saleng was thrown out. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's, a, it's a problem in East and Central and Southern Africa. I'm not, I'm not a very good stud student of what is going on in West Africa, but here in East and Central Africa, we are doing so badly that every time somebody wants to extend their rule, what they do is to change the constitution. I will end by saying this way. My professor who taught me a lot on issues of law and the constitution, mm -hmm. uh, Professor H.W. Okothogendo, mm -hmm. wrote a great piece at the turn of the century and said Africa is, a, is, is a, a place where constitutions die and we have constitutions without constitutionalism. We enact constitutions, then we start changing them. The current debate in Kenya is, is based on something close to that. Mm -hmm. But I can assure you, um, we, we are not Burundi. For those who think Kenyans um, who paid by blood and sweat to have this constitution will change it the way they want, I don't think so. We, we, we are not those countries. We are not basket cases. Mm -hmm. Here, this vibrant civil society led by uh, Irongo here and others, we will not allow that. We, we won't. So I think 
Thank but you. It's, yeah, that's our own twin. Right, just very briefly on Burundi, uh, let's hear from uh, Irongo Hilton. So the, <coughs> the concept of, um, I mean, I think is, uh, we've already covered a lot of ground, but I, I, I have a sense of sadness with Burundi also. And this is where I, I think um, Lucy and I will definitely agree on, um, that th this will not end well. Um, by the time that he steps down in two th 2034, if he is allowed to step down, um, or if he's alive, uh, he will have served 29 years. Mm -hmm. This will put him in the real realm of a number of uh, heads of states, including people like Nguema, Mugabe, Bia, Ngueso, Yoweri, a whole a bunch of leaders that really um, would have done much better to have stepped down many years, even decades before, to allow for a natural succession of, of democracy. A referendum, the definition of a referendum is the right to express political conscience. So if you have hundreds of thousands of people outside the country, including your political opponents, mm -hmm. if you are jailing protesters on the streets and giving them 32, I think it was 32 years um, uh, for simply protesting against a referendum, like they gave a German, Ruhuku, who is currently in, um, uh, is currently in, in cells. If you suspend uh, the media uh, during the context of the referendum, um, you really are left with just that cartoon, which is uh, this was a referendum that had only one allowed outcome, which mm -hmm. was a yes vote. Mm -hmm. And I think you know, anything born of this process will die of this process in the sense that it does not have the sufficient, uh, uh, I guess, the sufficient grounds for consensus in a society that this is the way forward. Thank you. So I think, you know, Burundi, Rwanda, uh, Uganda, all these countries need to look very carefully at um, uh, what is happening in Burundi. Thank you. The last point really is on Ethiopia. Just to, to correct something, um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think Desalin did not, was not pushed out. Mm -hmm. Actually, the good thing about him is that he read the sign of the times. And he said, I will step down in order for the process to open up again um, for a leadership to emerge. And I think the Prime Minister's visit a couple of weeks ago, uh, at but, least... But, well, what would be the signs, right? What would be the signs? Yeah, the signs no, would no, be maybe your forces protest. are against you, people are actually ostracizing you, you're being marginalized, you're not being called into meetings. You know, that, that is a sort of a being forced out somewhat. All of those conditions were available, uh, are current yes, in Burundi right, right now. Mm. Yeah. All of those conditions are, are right. And I think the difference between those two leaders is one stepped down and said, my leadership Thank is you. no longer acceptable Thank to you. the people. And the other one has pushed forward with another 19 years. Let's mm. hear from uh, Balozi. We'll come to you, Peter Biarajak, uh, briefly. Uh, Debel, Burundi is a very complicated uh, case. And I want to step back and look at a previous history of it just to say mm -hmm. that you cannot divorce Burundi today from what happened in colonial era. Uh, when you had the Belgians who put the tribes against each other mm -hmm. and that you know translated in the new part of a nation that had very difficult ethnic arithmetics mm -hmm. uh, who two against Tusi and you know that what has happened I think that's one story that can be told for a long time and but let's remember that the backdrop of our discussions the second one after the cycle of all these conflicts, there is what is known as the Arusha Accord, uh, which was negotiated by, uh, by you know, the late President Mandela and Mwalimu uh, Churias Nyerere that tried to balance that very issue mm -hmm. of hutu tusi relationship. And of course, you can also not forget what happens in Rwanda, because the population, most of the population that have run out have gone either to Tanzania or they're in Rwanda a few of them, Kenya and all over the place. So that also impacts on Burundi. Mm -hmm. But all said and done, I think that three principles that one can say here. The old adage that says those who live by the sword die by the sword. Mm -hmm. And if you plant those kind of seeds, that's exactly what you are quoting. Mm -hmm. But beyond that also, what President Obama once said, we are now discussing of so and so would be in power. We are not talking of institutions. We are talking of strong, strong men. Yeah. I think, Lucy, this way you can agree. We are not going to say strong women. Because <laughs> they, they're not. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> but the, and the, so the man is generic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's leave I it at that. Let's start to, to tackle this <laughs> issue. <laughs> and, and, and know that Africa, changing a constitution to me is not an issue. Because if the people are willing, we, uh, constitution, it says we give ourselves the constitution. Yes. I'm not sure this qualifies entirely. Thank you. Because as Hutton says, mm. some of the population are out. Thank you. Yeah. Right. Peter Biara Jack, then we close it up uh, on you as well. 
Indeed, uh, what happened in Burundi was expected. Yeah. I think since he made that decision to run for the third term, it wasn't just about one term. Uh, you could tell that this was a lifetime plan. And it, when Tanzania uh, bravely allowed him to land back, uh, that was endorsement of uh, whatever he will do. And uh, pressure on Rwanda mm -hmm. has essentially made it that there's really no any other option. And I suspect, because I heard that they, they met uh, at the border, they signed some deal between Kagame and Nkurunziza. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> he's there for life. Uh, and is indeed is the trend in the, in the region that we are in. And the mistake we have made here in this region, and it's very important for the civil society people to really understand this, is we have made our uh, democratic ideals dependent on individual politicians, on their goodwill. We, we, we took Mandela example too seriously, mm -hmm. that all these leaders uh, are going to be like Mandela, and they will decide to do the right thing, or they will be like Helen Mariam, uh, which is also now a great example. No. You have to prepare the condition so that if they don't decide to be that, you have a democratic base that can actually push for the right kind of outcome to occur. And this is what Ethiopia actually got right. Mm -hmm. You know, there are a lot of people, from, if you look at Ethiopia from a security perspective, it's yes. very fragile. But what I have begun to appreciate about it is the enormous awareness of the citizen to mobilize for democratic action. Not a partisan action. Here in Kenya, you mobilize massively but for partisan ac action. You never really have like a, a rally, massive rally that bring together all sort of different ethnic groups and political divide that are, is led by credible, independent civil society vo voices. When you have sea of people going on, is like one of the faction patrons is leading that. So, so you, you don't really have a, something here. And it, that's exactly the extreme problem in, in countries like uh, Burundi and my country in South Sudan. Because we are so dependent on the leaders doing the right thing. And when they decide to do the wrong thing, we really have no other, other choice. And this is where we are at the moment. Thank you.